Greg LeBlanc, uh, and I'm here with uh, Gary Klass, who is not only a Haas alum, but he's also the Senior Vice President uh, for the Virtual Channels Group at Wells Fargo. Welcome, Gary. Thank you. Thanks for having me. So, so Gary, we all know that finance is a very technical field. We think of it as a quantitative field. Um, and yet, uh, finance, as a, especially in the area of um, consumer and retail banking, um, requires lots of other quantitative insights other than finance, like operations, optimization, data analytics, and so forth. Um, but when you graduated from the Haas School uh, many years ago, well, maybe not that many years ago, uh, um, you, you came out without a lot of the formal analytical tools that you've had to sort of learn on the job. Um, so tell me, how has the, the business changed and how have you been able to uh, keep up with all of the analytical uh, capabilities that are required of a career in banking right now. Yeah, so I graduated in 1988 in the MBA program, and I was very fortunate to take a lot of the wonderful uh, finance curriculum at the at the Haas School, which is uh, outstanding and outstanding then, outstanding today. And really drew upon that. I had exposure in other disciplines, a little operations research, a little market research, and then you kind of know it's a lot about kind of where to look. Some of it you kind of learn on the job of meeting people, and I've always historically been a huge fan of following academic research. The, the best new ideas, the best work that's done is really published research. And once you kind of uh, figure out who's doing the top-notch work, you kind of follow them and their students. Amazing insight can be available through that. And I keep in contact, obviously, with Haas and some of the other academic programs. So some of us learned on the job. A lot of it is just trying ideas or, or obviously reaching out and learning and meeting people from other industries and trying what they do. It's worked very well over, over the years. So what are some of the early successes that you had uh, with what I guess used to be called applied economics, but it's now, you know, we call it data science, data analytics, and so forth. Uh, yeah, the big thing for me early in my career was uh, that's when the banking industry was really growing through consolidations. Um, historically, when I, I did that role at Wells Fargo many years ago, and it was very much a financial approach of sort of a book value of the company, shareholders' equity, and I, I sort of want to decompose it more towards the basics of the business, what, what customers that we would acquire and how we grow that relationship. And some of the work that uh, uh, things I had been exposed to in, uh, at, at Haas, uh, including one very important idea, the idea of network externalities. Obviously, if more people join a group, they can talk to those people and it kind of feeds on itself. Really much an academic idea at that point. I was able to use that knowledge and demonstrate that as well as Fargo was able to grow its retail banking business, more branches, more ATMs, and more states, that we were able to generate a network externality. Actually, never forget, sat in the president of the bank's office, kind of walked him through that using uh, stuff I'd learned at Haas, and he was a Haas graduate at the time, Paul Hazen. And it was having that academic rigor and that analytical insight, I think, was very persuasive to make the argument. Of course, it really, in the end, paid off very well for Wells Fargo. So I think in every industry now, the success that you have is a function of how well you know the customer, how well you know your product, how well you know what's going on inside and outside of the organization. Um, and so uh, a lot of people think that the legacy banks are, um, are, are sort of uh, right now at an at inflection point because um, on the one hand, they have access to superior data about their customer and know much more about uh, the business than a lot of the kind of fintech startups. But the fintech startups are seen as um, uh, being more agile, being able to use uh, analytics in, in more creative ways. Um, what are some of the challenges that you think um, uh, legacy banks like Wells Fargo are, are confronted with in this area? Well, I think your point is well taken that large, complex organizations, especially one in regulated industry, has to be very careful about the diligence and due care of their information about their customers. But I think it's a little bit of a misconception that, that banks can't be innovative. And part of that stems from a kind of a, a misunderstanding of the value chain in, in retail finance. There have always been non-deposit bank providers of capital and services and payments mechanisms. That's really not new. What's new is who's providing a lot of that infrastructure is different than it had been in the past and wasn't necessarily a bank to begin with. So certainly at Wells Fargo, we've been at the beginning. Wells Fargo was the first bank in the world to process a payment on the internet in 1997. Not a lot of people know that. So, and being close to San Francisco, of course, and being based in San Francisco has had a huge influence on that. We do try to learn from more innovative companies. We, as appropriate, you know, work with them and develop partnerships. So, Wells is very aware of that. In fact, we have a whole group of the company that really does nothing but focus on sort of that area of entrepreneurship and new company formation and, and how it can help us grow our business. Gary, thanks for coming back to Haas today. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.